Hello and welcome to the third of our revision videos on crime and punishment. Still looking at the Middle Ages and in every time period we do a case study where we look at one aspect of crime and punishment in that time period in a little bit more detail. And for this first time period, the Middle Ages, this medieval period, we need to look at the importance of the church. Now the church is a, is a massively powerful institution. It controls people's thoughts and actions. 99.9% .9 of people are profoundly religious. They believe without a shadow of doubt in the existence of God and heaven and hell. And they're very aware that their behaviour and their, their actions on earth will have a huge impact on what happens to them when they die. The clergy, people who work for the church, the priests, the nuns, were often the most educated members of a community. And churches and cathedrals were the largest buildings in most villages and towns. And they were a very visible and physical reminder of God's power on earth. They were also a clear reminder that the church had the power to judge, but also to protect. The medieval church taught that angels and demons battled for human souls, and that Christian saints were companions who could directly influence everyday life. There were also practical ways in which the church had an impact on people's lives. They owned a fifth of the country's wealth and land, and they collected one-tenth of all people's earnings every year in church taxes. Those taxes were known as tithes. And it even exercised control over members of other faiths. In the 13th century, the Christian church was very worried about the growth of other religions. And in 1290, every Jewish person living in England was forced to either convert to Christianity or be banished from the country. You remember trial by ordeal, which was used to decide on innocence or guilt. And the church had traditionally administered all of those trials by ordeal. But in the year 1215, the Pope ordered that priests should stop helping to organise trials by ordeal. An alternative way of deciding if somebody was guilty or innocent had to be found. And in England, the solution was trial by jury. The jury was a group of 12 men who observed the trial and decided whether the accused was guilty or not. A system very similar to the one we use today. There are also church courts which are linked to the king. In the 11th century, William I had encouraged the church to set up courts to deal with moral crimes. And these church courts worked on the principle that punishments should offer criminals an opportunity to reform and save their souls. Punishments like maiming, cutting off a part of the body, were seen as better than execution, as they offered criminals a chance to think about their crimes and feel regret for them. In the late 12th century, Henry II tried to limit the power of the church. He was concerned that separate church courts challenged his authority as king. And the king and the bishops met at a place called the Council of Clarendon to discuss the problem. And they agreed a clear statement on the relationship between church laws and the king's laws. And this was called the Constitution of Clarendon. And the bishops successfully argued in his constitution that members of the clergy should only be tried for crimes in church courts. And this right was known as benefit of clergy. Church courts only very rarely used the death penalty as a sentence. Punishments included enforced pilgrimage to a place of religious significance or confession and apology at mass. The system was open to abuse as anyone could claim to be a member of the church and a member of the clergy. The test for people uh, to prove that they were a member of the clergy was they had to read Psalm 51 in the Bible. Now you could get around that. Criminals could quite easily go away and memorise the psalm and recite it. They can't read or write, they're not members of the clergy, but they could recite one psalm. It's not very long. Psalm 51 became commonly known as the neck verse because knowing it could literally save your neck. The other thing to think about with the church is sanctuary. Some churches offered sanctuary to people accused of crimes. It was not offered in all churches, just some that were considered particularly important, perhaps ones that were on a pilgrimage route. A person who claimed sanctuary could go to one of these churches and ask for the help of the clergy. 
The clergy would report the crime. They had to do that. But the accused person was given the chance to swear an oath to leave the country within 40 days instead of having to go to court. And that system of sanctuary continued up until the year 1536 when it was abolished by Henry VIII. So these case studies are quite short. They just look at one, either one event, one person or a particular aspect of crime and punishment that was important. Here we've looked at the church. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you found this useful.